Right, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's audit and uh, governance meeting Wednesday the 23rd of August. Uh, just like to make you all aware that we're being recorded tonight. It's uh, not live stream but will be up later on uh, YouTube. Um, so item one, apologies for absence. I've got one from Councillor Pritchard uh, and apart from that I think we're all present. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting, if somebody would like to move and second them. Uh, move out Council Carr, Councillor Daniels. Uh, and show of hands in agreement. Yep. So, item number three, declarations of interest. Has anybody got any declarations to make? No. Nope. Uh, item number four, we've got an update from the external auditors uh, from Grant and Thornton. And I'd like to hand over to their representative. Thank you. Hello everybody, uh, it's a pretty brief update from us at this meeting because our formal audit findings report should be coming to the next meeting and that will contain all the detail of, of the work that we've been doing. Um, but just to sort of give you some assurance that the audit is going reasonably well, um, we have, we're, we're pretty much where we wanted to be at this point in time. Um, we have a few outstanding queries on, on various areas as you would expect, but um, nothing that we're hugely concerned about at this point in time. Um, we, I think the biggest issue we have at the moment is that we're still um, challenging a couple of the council's valuations of, of kind of dwellings and, and other land and buildings, but um, that I'm, I'm not concerned that won't be resolved by the time we come to the next meeting of the committee. Um, so we are, we're planning to bring you in effect a final audit findings report um, to the September meeting. We won't be in a position to actually sign our audit opinion though because we will still be waiting for assurances from the auditor of the pension fund um, and I think we're expecting those assurances at some point in October uh, but that will be the only thing outstanding hopefully the next time that you see me. So happy to take any questions but that was all I was wanting to say. Brilliant. Cheers. Uh, anybody got any any questions? No? Uh... Okay, okay, so on to item number five, we've got the internal audit quarterly progress report, quarter one, 2023 to 24, uh, and I'll hand over to the internal auditor, uh, Andrew. Cheers. Thank you, Chair. This report is my regular quarterly update report, which I present to the committee outlining the work undertaken during the quarter. The latest position relating to outstanding audit recommendations and progress of the external quality assurance action plan agreed at the conclusion of our compliance review with the public sector internal audit standards and I ask that you note my report. All results and information presented is at the 30th of June 2023. At the start of each year we profile our audit plan across four quarters of the, of the financial year and quarter one expected us to have completed 25% of the plan. However, I would like to highlight that due to exceptional circumstances within the team, we did not complete the expected reviews by the end of the period. To enable delivery of the planned work for 2023-24, I have already contingency planned a number of additional reviews and allocated these to BDO, our general audit provider, for completion, rather than using our internal resource drawn down from Lichfield District Council. However, I can confirm that we did finalise and complete three reviews which were carried forward from 2022-23 and these are reported in Appendix 1 of my report. Progress has been made with the plan by both BDO and our IT auditor and one review from quarter one has now been fully completed and a further two are in draft report stage and these are expected to be completed shortly. BDO have fully scoped their work for 2023-24, including the additional audits that I've allocated to them, and their planned timetable of work has been agreed and shared with the auditees and managers within Tamworth Borough Council. The current position in relation to the planned work is shown in Appendix 1 of my report. I will continue to keep the committee appraised of completion of the audit plan during the financial year, together with any subsequent contingency planning that may be required during this financial year. I've also included in Appendix 1 the current number of outstanding audit recommendations, and we currently have 64 outstanding, of which 13 are high priority, 
33 are medium priority and 18 are low priority. There is a slight downward trend in the number of recommendations and continued work with management will ensure that these are addressed in the future. Moving forward, I will incorporate into my progress report analysis and details of those outstanding high priority recommendations, together with the management actions taken to address these. I can verbally report that of the high priority recommendations outstanding, these relate to the housing repairs policy, which needed finalisation and adoption by the Council, and a recommendation around the asset management policy, again, finalisation and adoption by the Council. There are a number of recommendations in relation to payment card industry standard compliance, and those related to the policies and procedures to be reviewed, the scope of the payment card environment to be clearly defined, and completion of regular compliance reviews against the payment card industry standards. There are also a number of recommendations raised around climate change, and those were around the endorsement of the climate change action plan, and following adoption of the action plan, adoption of key performance indicators, a review of the resources available to deliver the plan, and also establishment of a cross-departmental working group. The remaining recommendation was around GDPR and then the implementation of a record of processing activity. I am working with management to ensure full completion of these recommendations and I'll be attending corporate management team <coughs> to discuss all those outstanding audit recommendations in the next month. I'll specifically also be undertaking a full review of both the payment card industry standards audit and also the climate change audit as these were both limited assurance reviews. This is in compliance with our audit charter, which expects that internal audit will formally follow up with management and obtain assurance that high priority recommendations have been fully implemented. I'll report back accordingly to this committee as part of my quarterly progress report. I've also included an overview of the external quality assessment action plan, and this details the work completed with indicative timeframes as information for this committee. We continue to implement the recommendations made together with those which were suggested enhancements. I'm expecting full completion of these recommendations by the 31st of March 2024. Again, I will keep the committee appraised of progress. A compliance self-assessment with the public sector internal audit standards is reported annually to this committee with the next review to be undertaken during March to April 2024. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have on my report. Uh, Chair Sandra, uh, anybody, any questions? Uh, I'd just like to say uh, th thank you for the work there. Um, uh, even with the, the exceptional circumstance, it sounds like the, you're really on top of it. Uh, and I look forward to seeing the, um, the high priority areas and yeah. the action plan in, in, the, in the, the next report. Uh, so item number six is the update on independent member. Oh, sorry. What's the uh, So we've been asked to, that the committee notes internal audits report, quarterly report appendix one, which includes results up to the 30th of June. Can I ask for a move over and a second, up, please? All in favour? And I'm talking number six, please, Andrew. Thank you, Chair. As part of the guidelines set down by the Chartered Institute for Public Finance and Administration and also the Society of Local Authority Chief Executives, we assess ourselves annually against the criteria outlined around the effectiveness of the committee. This was formally reported on the 9th of February 2023 and is attached as Appendix 1 of my report. I ask that you consider the proposed training plan following the skills audit and provide input into further training needs together with those identified within my report. I've provided a summary of the tra training needs from the recent skills audit that has been completed and the main areas that were identified were around local authority finance, treasury management, the roles of internal and also external audit, governance and also risk management. 
Whilst this is not an exhaustive list, I'm, I'm open to further suggestions from the committee for any other areas that you may feel would be beneficial. Once agreed, I can set up the appropriate training, which will be a mix of internal and external providers conducted via teams and also potentially prior to the audit and governance committee meetings. Once finally agreed, I will liaise with democratic services and send around a timetable for the delivery of, of the planned training. Moving on to independent members on the Audit and Governance Committee. I've outlined the previous work in this area that has been undertaken, and this is detailed within my report. It was previously agreed that we would advertise this position, and whilst we went out to the open market last year, unfortunately we were unsuccessful in attracting a suitable candidate or candidates. Reference has been made with other authorities within both Staffordshire and also wider afield with the Midlands Audit Group. And the issue with attracting suitable candidates is not just an issue at Tamworth, but also across other authorities who have exp ex experienced similar issues. I should like to highlight that Sitford does identify that it is best practice to have an independent member on the Audit Committee. Whilst the position is currently unremunerated, a small number of authorities do pay an allowance of £400. It is envisaged, however, that this role should remain unremunerated currently. However, dependent upon the responses to the application process that we get back in September 2023, this may need to be reconsidered. I've included an indicative timetable and outlined the requirements for potential independent members to the committee. And I ask for any comments and observations that you may have on my report. Uh, Chair Sandra, uh, anybody, any questions or comments? Councillor Fergood. Thank you, Chair. Um, the actual um, allowances that are mentioned within your report, um, is that a standard figure throughout all, um, I don't know, committees, independent members? Um, I, I, I know somebody that was on the um, Police and Crime Commissioner's um, um, Audit Committee. Um, and they got a, a certain amount. Is that standard throughout? Um, from doing the research and looking at the information concerned, £400 is, appears to be an appropriate amount for a borough council of, the, of, this, of this size. There are other authorities, larger, larger authorities, for example, that are paying £1,500 per annum, for example, but again, I think the 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 sort of the the idea was around not obviously have, having the option to go for potential remuneration. But I think the first option was to get somebody in onto the onto the committee first to actually have a have a look in relation to see what the what the market was open to effectively. But again. Other, another authority in Staffordshire, for example, is currently paying £400 in a, a year. But again, from their perspective, they're a, they're a joint authority with an authority over in, in North Derbyshire. So effectively, this, this, the, the independent member covers both authorities. So, so it's £400 for each. But £400 is, is pretty much the standard amount. I guess it's a case. Like, sorry. I guess it's a case of getting somebody with a passion for Tamworth and, and what goes on in Tamworth. Um, it's unfortunately the, 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 the rules um, in, of the type of person with um, councils um, not being on the council previous five years, etc. cetera, um, does cause a, a difficulty. I mean, there's one or two ex-councillors that you, you think would be ideal for the role, and probably quite um, enthusiastic in taking it up, but it's, yeah. I, I agree. Obviously, the, the there are those 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 criteria that the the applicant has got to got to fulfil in in relation to that, and uh, and uh, I would again I would agree that that close, closes a number of elements or or paths uh, paths down e effectively on on that. I think I think sort of generally I think the other the other side of the the coin is the is sort of the sit for guidance around having independent members. And again, even though I speak to fellow chief auditors within Staffordshire and also within the Midlands Audit Group, for example, 
even though SITFA have sort of recommended that it is best practice that they should go towards that, that side of things, even they're not having the applicants coming forward in, in relation to that. I think there's also the, the, the issue or potential issue that the good candidates can potentially get picked up very, very quickly and then effectively we're left with the with the remainder. I think from from Tamworth's um, point of view, yes, we've been looking to try to get an independent member onto onto the committee, and we've been do, trying that for a, for a couple of years now. Um, but again, we we are further down the process than other other authorities. Andrew, Councillor Dodd. Yeah, going back to the bit about the remuneration, I mean, I'll be honest, if we get if we find somebody who's willing to do it for free, by all means, but you're going to ask an individual to come in here and sit with us and every single person in this room, except them, is being paid to be here. It's what, you call it, it's what your allowances cover you for, for attending committees. So effectively, you're being paid to be here. So it, I see it a bit unfair to try and ask somebody to come in and do it for free and also give it the same commitment that everybody else has took on. So. It, it, it is right though that, that they can claim expenses but just not a yep. remuneration in the policy as it stands at the minute. Um, but but, but I, th I think uh, as well, uh, as with Councillor Doyle, he, he, if we're going to entice the, the right person that's come into the role that the the that they're generally going to want to have a few pennies to go to to go with it it might also explain why you get very few applicants i can i can certainly councillors i can take that back to senior management and we can we can have another look at that yeah uh, anybody else uh council Fergood. thank you chair I can't remember with the conditions for becoming an independent member um, whether it has to be a Tamworth resident or whether we can take somebody from Litchfield or a district council area um, or Atherston even, uh, North Warwickshire. Um, and do we know whether or not uh, Litchfield have got a, an independent auditor or indeed North Warwickshire? Um. Effectively, within the criteria, there isn't necessarily a, a stipulation in relation to connection to Tamworth Borough Council. So we could yeah. we could look 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 outside. Effectively, Litchfield District are in the same position that Tamworth are in, yeah. um, and again, that's something that that we could potentially possibly explore in in relation to that. Because again, I think there's like I made um, reference earlier to um, Staffordshire Moorlands and High yeah. Peak up in the, in the north of Staffordshire, they have combined a number of their services. And again, from from our from Tamworth's perspective, we've got a number of, of shared services with with Litchfield. Yeah. Um, again, we do and we did advertise the position across the whole of the West Midlands last time we we went out. Okay. Um, but again, that is something that we could we could have a look look at, and again, that's another option that we we have been sort of speaking to other chief auditors in relation to Staffordshire about sort of sharing an independent member potentially sort of going forward on on that. But again, when you when you're starting to add a number of authorities into the mix, then that's when, as previously said about remuneration, then that becomes. A priority because because effectively you're not going to I would suggest get an independent member who's unremunerated across three authorities. But I guess collectively, um, a few authorities would be able to offer or put together a, a decent bundle um, to attract somebody perhaps. Uh, anybody else? Um, I just wanted to make the committee aware that with the, 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 the skills audit, I've loaded myself onto some of the LGI uh, courses that are coming up throughout the year, um, but there's nothing, they're, they're 
mainly leadership ones for chairs, but there's nothing stopping you guys going onto the LGA website and they've, they've got workshops and, and all that on there as well. So, so a bit, a bit of um, self-learning as, as well as the stuff that Andrew's going to sort out for us. Um, so thank you for the report. Uh, recommendations are one, committee consider the proposed training plan following the skills audit and provide input into any further areas that they would deem necessary for inclusion in the plan. Uh, number two, consider and ratify the approach to be taken in respect of appointing an independent member to the committee. Uh, mover and a seconder, please. Uh, mover, Councillor Clark. Uh, Councillor Dahl, <laughs> got it first. Uh, all those in favour? <laughs> There's no prize, I don't mind. Uh, so, moving on. So, on number seven, the Audit and Governance Committee timetable. Um, it's had a little bit of a jig around. I uh, just want to pass over to Andrew if I just want to go through that. Yes, one of the things that we've 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 discussed is is around the timing of the sort of the planned work because I, we do appreciate that a number of the committees are fairly heavy with the amount of reports that are coming to to the committee. So so effectively, what we we've tried to do is is even that out a bit more. Now, obviously, the next meeting would be in relation to um, the audit findings on 27th of September, for example, and we've we've moved from this meeting to that meeting, the risk management quarterly update. But again, one of the things that we also have have done is that there are a couple of um, regul regulation of investigative powers act that we've included in the September meeting and also the Local Government Ombudsman's report, annual review and report as well. Now, what we what we have done is move across a, a number of reports, the annual Treasury outturn, and basically the the other the other the other one was the counter fraud update um, from the September meeting to the October meeting. And again, what we've what we're we're aiming to do is in sorry in November we're going to bring the counter fraud update, but there are a couple of reports from the monitoring officer that will be included in November for the councillors' code of conduct and also the review of the constitution, which again were were being aimed to come in either September or October. So we've 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 evened those out, um, and again the. The, the rest of the reports going through for the rest of the year are effectively as planned currently. Um, it was just a very quick uh, comment from me just to um, remind the committee that this is Grant Thornton's final year as your external auditor. So although this does kind of have us presenting reports running into 2024, in effect over the course of the next six months hopefully we'll be handing over to azettes um and we'll work with with officers and and the new auditors to try and make that as as smooth as possible cheers thank you uh, anyone got any comments on the the work plan as it stands well personally i think it looks like a nice balance um this is probably going to be the smaller one of the <laughs> meetings that, that we're going to be having uh, moving forward. Um, so if there's nothing else, um, I'd like to close the meeting at 18.24. Thank you all for coming.